stars look down on New Year's Eve in New York. They say that fate is in the stars, that each of our years is planned ahead, and nothing can change destiny. Is that true? How many times have you said, I wish I could live this year over again? This is the story of a woman who did relive one year of her life. It's almost midnight, and that's where our story begins. if you don't scram. Get rid of her, will you? All right, all right, I'll go. But listen, don't wait for Barney. He won't show up on time. He never does. You ought to know that. Bess should never be allowed to drink. Bess should never be allowed. Bess should never be. Will you stop it, please? Something dreadful happened. Mrs. Barney? What's he done now? William. Barney is dead. Dead? I shot him. I killed him. I shot him with this. In the right hand, a smoking revolver. Only they don't smoke anymore, do they? It's a new powder or something. Lying on the floor where I shot him. I didn't want to leave him like that. There was someone at the door, pounding at the door. What am I going to do, William? Should I call the police? Oh, heavens no, they'd only arrest you for murder. They've got such one-track mind. 
You better see John Friday. John's giving a party. I can't see him. We'll see him alone. He'll know what to do. Come on. tie this time. I just about given it up. John, where are the others? You are having a party, aren't you? Oh, no. You see, you and Barney are giving the party. I was just about to call Barney. Oh, no, you can't. I mean, you mustn't. All right. Now that you're here, I won't need to. How was the benefit? The benefit? I'm sorry I didn't get down to see you. How'd it go? What's the matter, Sheila? Everything. Well, you haven't given up London, have you? You're still going, I mean? London? I think London will do you good. I still haven't found a play you like to keep on turning them down. I'm doing a play right now. Say Goodbye by Paula Costello, remember? Paula who? That's not a bad title, Say Goodbye. You mean you're reading it? I'm playing in it. Say, so what is this? A joke? John, don't do this. Don't play games. All right, then suppose we stop pretending that Barney will ever finish his new play. John, stop it. Stop talking like this. That was last year. It was last year and the year before that. Barney's play was always about ready. He'll never finish it, and you've got to face that. Here, 
Let me take your coat. I'll fix you something to drink. Well, that is a stunning dress. I'll have to take a better look at that, Sheila. Starting. Has been for over half an hour. No, oh, you mean 1946 is through. This is 1947. No, 1946 is just beginning. What on earth's the matter? What's wrong, Sheila? John, something's happened. I don't know exactly how, but it's happened. This is 1946, a whole year ago. It's 1946, yes. Come on, I'm giving a party. I remember now. I bought this dress because Bonnie likes being white. I'm wearing the sapphires he gave me for Christmas. John, this is 1946. Well, at last we're getting the truth. I thought that was a new dress. Happy New Year, Sheila. Happy 1946. I've got to go. I've got to go home. Oh, wait a minute. I'll take you. No, I've got to go alone. Oh, I wish I could tell you what's happened. But I couldn't make you believe it. I won't believe it myself unless... Oh, Jill, I've got to go home. I've got to know. Well, I know that look. 
Barney's about to drink again. Oh, it isn't that at all. You can have a drink. No, Sheila. I insist. Just one. It's New Year's. No, darling. Remember me? I'm the guy who can't take just one. You ought to drink a toast with something. I had some ginger ale, Santa. Beautiful sparkling ginger ale. Vintage 1945. <laughs> what did you do at the benefit tonight? Benefit? Mm-hmm. Oh, a scene from Out of the Blue. I play? You didn't. But I did. Well, it was very gracious of you. And generous. Nonsense. The audience loved it. Remembered it and loved it. It's a great play, Barney. It was all right, Miss Day. I've done better since. Always they ask me when I'm going to write another Out of the Blue. The idiots. Don't they know you only write that once? You'll write another soon, this year. No pep talk. Please, spare me that. They liked it, huh? Yes, Barney. They remembered it? Yes, Barney. I wonder if they remember that Out of the Blue made a star of Sheila Page. Very refreshing. Like kissing a girl through a plate glass window. I'm glad I'm not giving up love. Oh, I'm glad of that, too. I guess I'm out of the letter, man. Well, let me straighten that tie. No matter why, these people all know me, I hope. Sheila. I'm sorry I'm late, but I couldn't find a taxi. Oh, that's high. I shouldn't have deserted you. I was at your apartment earlier this evening, wasn't I? You certainly were. Just wanted to make sure. Things are a little mixed up with me. Everything all right now? I think so, John. I hope so. Good. Bonnie's in there somewhere. I'll find him. This is it. The party's on. Come on in, Virgil. Hello, Finn. Hi. Be careful with those skins. One of them's still alive. You know, this works much better if you have no one in mind. She loves me, huh? She loves me. William, will you be serious for a moment? I must ask you something. Do you remember being with me about two hours ago? Maybe somehow it was a year from now? I haven't seen you since Christmas, Sheila. Uh, did I thank you for that shower cap? It was exactly what I wanted. But that was a year ago. This party, everything, was a year ago. And I know what's ahead for all of us. You're going to be committed to an insane asylum. I always thought there was a logical end for me. William, you must avoid a woman named Mrs. Shaw. Why, Sheila? She's the one who'll have you committed. Promise me you'll have nothing to do with Mrs. Shaw. That'll be easy. I don't know Mrs. Shaw. William, you don't think I'm mad, do you? Mad? No, no more than the average person. I am, you know, much madder than average. Chilla. Oh, Barney, I love your party. You meet such nice birds. Hello, Hilgama. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Barney. This is Mrs. Shaw. Barney Page, Heather E. Shaw. Sure. You're Sheila Page's husband, aren't you? Yeah. How does it seem to be married to such a glamorous star? It's absolute heaven. Are you an actor, too? No, I'm a caddy. I carry Sheila's club. Oh. Barney, Mrs. Shaw is very much interested in my operetta. Oh, is that so? Oh, I hear it's great. Anyone who puts money in that show is making a wise investment. That's just what I was thinking of doing. No. Yes. Uh, come along, Eloise. Now, who is that? I've seen that young man's face before. Of course. It's William Williams, the poet. I knew it. I saw his picture in the Review of Literature. I said at the time, that fancy face, that bone structure. It's bony, all right. Excuse me, I've got to meet that poet. If only I had loved your flesh and careless, clean love where it fell. 
It might be I could live afresh and love as lightly and as well with little more to tell. My goodness. Who are you? And where'd you learn that poem? From your own book, William Williams, Songs from the Solar Plexus. Are you bringing out another book of poems, Mr. Williams? That's all I've been doing is bringing them out and the publishers keep bringing them back. Have you ever thought of having them published privately? On vellum? Morocco bound? Illuminated? That's rather expensive, isn't it? Oh, merely a matter of money, if we must be vulgar. Well, if we must, we must. <laughs> By the way, my name is Shaw, Mrs. Eloise Shaw. How do you do, Mrs. Shaw? <laughs> How do you do? Mrs. Shaw? Yes, Mrs. Shaw. Uh, tell me, do you know Sheila Page? No, no, I, oh, I know of her, of course. But you never met her? No, I haven't. Why? Well, she knows you. She told me all about you. Oh. My goodness. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, I think I hear the doorbell. <laughs> Oh, oh, I say, I, I'm terribly sorry. I've come up once more too many. Yes, this is the seventh, isn't it? Yes, just come in, come in. Happy New Year, all that sort of thing. Oh, no, no, thank you. Really, uh, you're very kind. Oh, I nonsense. Should, no but... one's ever turned away from the page's door. There's always room for one more beautiful person. Oh. Uh, my name is William. William William. Oh, well, I'm Paula Costello. <laughs> I didn't get you anything for Christmas, Barney, but it's never too late. It's Paula Costello, Barney Page. How do you do? I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Page. I really didn't mean to crash your party. I'm supposed to be at the Winkler's downstairs. Very good friends of ours. We often share parties. Our guests overflow into their place and uh, vice versa. Would you like a drink? I think I should. This is my fourth party. Of course you should. John, it's Friday, Miss Costello. Oh, no, William know. stole it from the Winkler's party. Hmm. I never got invited to the right party. Well, thank you. I can't pretend I don't know who you are, Mr. Page. Your Out of the Blue was a great success in London. I loved it. Thank you. Because you're plagued by people asking for another Out of the Blue. I am. Well, fool them and write a comedy. There were touches in your play that indicated a great gift for comedy. That's exactly what I'm doing. Well, then we think alike. We most certainly do. Drink to that. Oh. And there I was at the airport saying goodbye to Bertie. And someone discovered there was a cancellation. So we talked to see who'll go with him, and I won. Paula, come and meet your hostess, Sheila Page. I'd love to. Sheila Page. I've heard of her. I'm just looking forward to her visit. Paula, this is Sheila Page. How do you do? Sheila Page Barney, do you Then this charming man must be your husband. Yes. This charming man is my husband. I hope you'll forgive my crashing your party, Mrs. Page. Your husband's been so sweet about it. What are you doing in New York? You're supposed to be in London. Well, I was just explaining to your husband. There was a cancellation. It was just a silly whim. Paula really belongs at the Winklers downstairs. She came up one floor too many. Won't the Winklers be worried? Yes, I'm afraid they will. I stood out alone to look at your Greenwich village. But I can't imagine why you call it a village. Don't look at me. I didn't name it. I hope you enjoy London, Mrs. Stage. Sheila isn't going to London. She's staying here to do a play for me. Oh, what a disappointment. For London, I mean. But it won't be a play written by you, Mr. Costello. Dear me, I shouldn't think so. I've no intention of writing one for you. Oh, so you're a playwright. Well, I've had one mild success in London. You've been most kind, Mr. Page. Mr. Friday. Good night. I'll see you at the door. She's lying. She has written a new play. She came here because she knew John Friday was our guest. She came in quite by accident, Sheila. And I must say, you were unaccountably rude to her. I like to ask people to my party. Oh, no. There are at least half a dozen people here you didn't ask. The genius, Mrs. Shaw, that gang... Mrs. Shaw? Eloise Shaw? She's here? Don't be rude to her. She's backing Hill Gardner's new operator. How did you know so much about Paula Costello? Yes, how did you know she wrote plays? You're drinking, Barney. So what? You said I could have just one. This is just one. 
William, have you met Mrs. Shaw? Yes, I have. I meant to ask you about that. She's never met you. How'd you know so much about her? Yeah, what is it all about, Sheila? Why were you so rude to Paula Costello? What's wrong, Sheila? Yes, Sheila, what's wrong? Well, nothing's wrong. Go on with the party. Don't let me spoil things. I'll see if everything's ready in the kitchen. You mind? I'm your host. Oh, nice party. Thanks. Can I help? There's nothing to do, really. Maddie's got everything started. I behave very badly in there. But Paula Costello turning up like that. Just to say, you can't escape me just by not going to London. You knew her name before anybody mentioned it, Sheila. You know that she wrote plays. And for some reason, you don't like her. Oh, I have a very good reason, Willie. Paul is part of what I tried to tell you in there. You're afraid of her? Yes. I thought if we stayed in New York, Bonnie would never meet her, but... What do I do now? I won't believe this year is laid out for me like a pattern and nothing can change it. I've got to change it. I've got to, do you understand? I don't know, Sheila. But I'll try. If you want me to, I'll try. Wouldn't you like to sit this one out? It isn't polite for the host to drink too much at his own party. This is not my party. These are all your friends. With the possible exception of maybe two people, these are all your crummy friends. You were very rude, Sheila, to the only interesting person who turned up at this crummy party. So she went away. I'm sorry, Bucky. May I have a drink? I haven't had one yet. Oh, no, no. That won't work. This is my drink. It's not my liquor because I'm on the wagon, but it's my drink because I made it. I created it. I'm a creative artist, Sheila. How did you know that? We'll be serving breakfast soon. You don't need another drink. It's too early for breakfast. The party's only just getting underway. All over New York City, parties are just getting underway. Downstairs at the Winklers, there's a beautiful party just getting underway. Would you like to drop in on the Winklers, Sheila? No, Bonnie, I wouldn't. What kind of New Year's spirit is that? That's your trouble, Sheila. No spirit. And you want to know something else? You're no fun. <laughs> Yes, would you like to drop in on the Winklers downstairs? Having a wonderful party. Have they got any sparkling burgundy? Gallons of it. Hey, that's for me. Come on, Virgil. Beth, please don't. Pay no attention to my wife, Beth. She's had too much to drink and is becoming unmanageable. You know, Beth, you're the only true friend I've got. The only true friend in all the world. Well? Can I ask Maddie to serve breakfast, Sheila? Please, will you? Barney will fall in love with that woman, will you? He'll go and drink. Become a hopeless alcoholic. He'll grow to hate me. He'll try to kill me. He'll 
got to escape all that, will you? There's a new rocket plane that flies faster than the speed of sound. It escapes the roar of its own engines. Last year began with Paul Costello. This would have begun the same. But I can't have it end the same. I've got to get Bonnie out of New York. Where can I go to escape from everything? Where? It was a beautiful party, and I had a beautiful time. I'm glad you did. Did you wish the Winklers a happy new year for me? Many times, many times. And for William, too. And for Friday, for everybody. That involved quite a bit of drinking, but what could I do? That's right. What could you do? You're very understanding, Sheila. Yes, I'm very understanding. I don't deserve you, Sheila. That's right. You don't deserve me. In some ways, of course, you don't deserve me. That evens it up very nicely. Very nicely. I think now I'd like to go to bed. That's a splendid idea. Good night, William. You're the only true friend I've got. That's embarrassing, because I don't like you. I don't like you at all. Wonderful news. We're not going to London, you know. I know. But we're not staying in New York. We're not staying in New York. We're going to California. California? Mm -hmm. Let me take your coat. I'll call the airport and leave tonight and be in California at dawn. I don't think I like California. What's wrong with it? It's a wonderful place. Yes, sir. Sure. California is wonderful. If you're a grapefruit. Bound. On vellum, illuminated. Who are these? 
It's dedicated to Eloise. Who's that? Shaw. Sure. It happened. Even though I warned him, it happened. Hello. Here's a poem called To Sheila. If you would flee from fate, first learn to flee from your shadow under the full moon. If you would run from destiny, first learn to run through snow, leaving no footprints. Oh, why would he dedicate that to you? Run through snow, leaving no footprint. Is that you, darling? Yes, Barney. So at last you've seen the inside of a movie studio, huh? Fascinating. I don't know why I held out so long. Well, let's have dinner, Sandy. I was invited to three cocktail parties. I hurried home just to be with you. Oh. Here's your reward. I was expecting a more elaborate kiss than that. Can't afford it just now. <laughs> Ask about our easy payment plan. <laughs> Sheila, I've got wonderful news for you. Yes? What? I just finished reading the most remarkable play. Really? That good? Oh, better than that. Really fine writing. And a whale of a part in it for you. So bright, he finally found something. Good meaty drama, critics award stuff. You play an actress. Sheila, did you hear me? I play an actress. Bonnie, what's the title? It's called Say Goodbye. What's wrong, Sheila? Who wrote it? Whose name is on that play? There isn't any name on it. I wondered about that. Bridie left the name off purposely. I won't play it, Barney. You won't play it? I don't like the title. It's an unlucky word, goodbye. The title can be changed. You know that. Well, I don't like playing an actress. I've always felt that way. Why, for heaven's sake? Well, they're not real people, actresses. Audiences don't like them. Nonsense. Wait until you read this. It's the private life of an actress. No backstage stuff at all. I suppose she has a husband. Yes, it takes place in Paris. The second act is in Italy. Where she goes with the other man, no doubt. Yeah, how did you know? How did I know? Well, those things always have the same plot. The plot doesn't matter in this. It's a story of character. You're only off the stage six minutes. There's never been such a part. You could play it for Ellen. I won't play it at all. Sheila, I consider that a very unreasonable attitude. Really? Yes, unreasonable and stupid. Haven't you any respect for my judgment? How about my judgment? Darling, you're only a woman. You're not expected to have either judgment or intelligence. But I do have intuition. I know instinctively this role is wrong for me. Well, if you won't play this, I don't know what you will play. Something like this doesn't turn up every day. It might. I might be rehearsing a play by my husband if Barney Page would spend more time writing plays instead of reading them. I shouldn't have said that. I was angry for a moment. That's when we say what we really mean, when we're angry. Been inside of you quite a while. It's out now. Feel better? I said I was sorry, Barney. You'd like another play from me, wouldn't you? All this fine talk about what it would mean for me. But you're making sure there's a big fat part in it for you. You'd do almost anything to get another out of the blue, wouldn't you? You'd even spend another three months in this sun kissed purgatory if that would do it, wouldn't you? Bonnie, don't. It isn't like that at all. You've got it all wrong. I haven't had a drink in three months. I'm burnt so brown by that devilish sun, I don't know myself in the mirror. I'm so healthy, I think, and it's all your fault. What are you trying to make of me? I'm going out to try and undo a little of your dirty work. of a late spot. We can have a drink here. Come home. Friday's just arrived. Yes. It's Barney. He's on his way home. Well, have you read the train? 
I came right out on the heels of it. Couldn't wait. You had it all nicely timed, didn't you? I'd just be finishing the last act as you walk in. I rush into your arms. John is divine. When do rehearsals start? Yes, I'm afraid it was something of that sort. I thought so. Well, I won't play it, John. You won't play it? But it's a great play, Sheila. Yes, I know. Is that why you left off the author's name? I, uh, say that as a sort of surprise. Really? I do love surprises. Let's have it. Paula Costello. Sit down, John. Thank you. I'm sorry I can't pretend to be astonished. I knew it was Paula Costello. You? Oh, but you couldn't have. Yes, I knew. And I say now what I've said before. I will not play in anything written by that woman. I don't like her. She's dangerous. She can only be dangerous by transatlantic cable. What do you mean? Paula went back to London. Back to London? Yes, they're making a movie of the first play. It'll uh, keep her there quite a while. <laughs> I won't do that woman's play no matter where she is. Not even if she's in London? But she won't stay in London. Oh, that could be arranged. John, will you give me your word that Paula Costello will stay away from New York during the entire run of the play? You have my word. Now, shall I go out and come in again? Why? So you can read that line. John, it's divine when to rehearse the start. You must think me not a fool. No, Sheila. I think I understand. A touching scene. Very touching. Hello, Barney. Hello. Barney, I'm going to do the play. You were right about it. It's a splendid part for me. So dear old John was able to talk you into it. How do you get around it, Friday? Tell me your secret. Might be a handy thing for a husband to know, huh? The play did it. By the way, I've got Bess Michaels for the maid. And I'm out here to sign Bob Randall for the husband. Bob Randall? Fancy that, Sheila, playing opposite a movie star. Wonderful. Well, I think I'll run along. We can talk more about this tomorrow. Can you two be ready to leave in a week? We can leave at sunrise tomorrow. There. I've made a decision. Do you mind terribly, Sheila? I'll see you in the morning. I never did like California, but tonight was a payoff. Tonight they went too far with me. You know what time they closed the bars in this state? Well, oh, that clock. Barney, don't you want to know who the author is? The author of Say Goodbye? I don't want to hear anything about it. Who is it? Paula Costello. Costello? That English girl crashed our New Year's party. Oh, yeah. As I remember, you were jealous of her because she took a fancy to me. I, I considered her dangerous. You'll have to get over that notion, Sheila. The women are dangerous just because they're attractive. You admit she's attractive, then? More than that. She's gorgeous, enchanting. Judging from her play, extremely talented. Don't you realize the same words describe you? Gorgeous, enchanting, talented? I've got all those words wrapped up in a cute little package label, my word. Now let's go back to the beginning and do it once more. Once more and I'll fall apart. Last year I did a play with just two actors. Next year, I'll do one with just scenery. Well, Mr. Friday, how's the rehearsal going? Having trouble? Yes, it's the second act, Mrs. Shaw. The second act? Dear me. I must admit, I didn't quite understand it, but I thought it was lovely. Was it there? The local critics seem to think so. Well, it was most impolite of them to say so. We shouldn't bring plays to this town anyway. I never did like New Haven, except for those Yale boys. <laughs> They're nice. Doesn't William look elegant? Stand up straighter, darling. That place is no good if you... Lump. Mrs. Shaw, please, we're trying to rehearse. Really? Is 
there anything I can do? No. no. Come along, William. Let's go someplace where we can watch. <laughs> John, you must listen to me. I know I'm right. I've known from the start. This act will work if we play it backwards. We've tried everything else. How do we do it? It's a little complicated. Bob arrives in Italy as soon as the curtain goes up. Beth doesn't bring the letter until the final scene. I say goodbye to Ricardo in the first scene, and Bob comes in before the letter. She's right, Friday. That is the way to play it. Do we just read our speeches backwards? That's the way you read most of yours last night. Oh, were you here? I thought I was grand. I'm no writer, you know, and the author's in London. Perhaps Barney could fix it. Oh, let's try it ourselves, John. It just means juggling the lines. Barney drove to New York this morning. Well, incidentally, the Guild is interested in his new play. He's probably there right now discussing production. Hello, everybody. Barney. Hello. I've got a wonderful surprise for all of you. Tonight there'll be cries of author, author. And you know what? The author will be here. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Paula Costello. Hello, 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 hello. Oh. Hello, hello. Say, what enthusiastic reception. They must be worse than I thought it was. What are you doing here, Paula? I sent for her. We needed her. Paula's got a new second act. <laughs> and here it is. The trick is to play the whole thing backwards. You see, the husband arrives in Italy the minute the curtain goes up. The maid doesn't bring the letter until the final scene. Sheila says goodbye to Ricardo in the very first scene. And the husband comes in before the letter. See? Well, what's the matter? It works, believe me. We believe you, Paula. Well, Sheila, what do you say? Huh? Dear, we're not in for another scene, are we? I'll talk to her. <sighs> you shouldn't have come, Paula. Why not? Barney, Mr. Page asked me. Mr. Page has nothing to do with my show. He just happens to be married to my star. Yes. Isn't that unfortunate? What may I ask do you think you're doing? I'm leaving the play, Barney. Friday will have to find someone else. You can't do that, Sheila. We got bad notices. It isn't the little gem we thought it was. It reads better than it plays. I couldn't afford to open in New York. Better to leave now before it's too late. Oh, stop it. Stop making ridiculous excuses. It's Paula Costello, and you know it. Go on, Maddie, leave there. Go get a drink to Sophia with you. Why did you do it, Bonnie? Why did you send for Paula? Sheila, I'm going to make an absurd promise to you. Absurd because it'll be so easy to keep. It'll make you happy. I promise never to see Paula Costello again. I sent for her because I sincerely believe the play needed her. But she means nothing to me personally, nothing. You know what we talked about all the way up here? You, just you. Even when you stopped for a drink? All right, we had a drink or two. Does that prove anything? Paula's no more interested in me than I am in her. If you weren't so blind, you see the real reason she came so readily when I came with her. What do you mean? Friday, John, Friday. You've kept them apart, Sheila, with that silly ultimatum you gave him in California. Possible. Paula and John? Why not? He's only human. He can't go through life being a big brother to everyone. Oh, I wish I could believe you. Ever try very hard. Oh, Bonnie. Come here. I'm sorry, Sheila. I kept my end of the bargain. You didn't have to send for Paula, Barney. Your wife saved the play all by herself. Yeah? But you're glad Paula's here just the same. It's all right, John. Everything's all right now. Come along, darling. We'll be ducking out right after the curtain tonight. See the New York opening. <laughs> I don't know what's the 
matter with it. Maybe I shouldn't have tried to write a comedy. Uh, before another producer turns it down, got to fix this triangle scene. Oh, what's wrong with it? Woman's viewpoint. If a woman's after a man, she just doesn't behave this way. Well, how would she behave? Well, if they're alone together in his apartment, she wouldn't spend that much time working on the manuscript of his play. You're beginning to get the idea. I like talismans. Yes. Well, we're all set for a long run, Sheila. Tickets selling into next spring. I'll see you after the matinee. All right. William, how nice. But these orchids are from you and Eloise. No, no, just from Eloise. I loathe orchids. They have no scent, you know. I bought these violets with a quarter I found in the lining of an old tweed jacket. My very own quarter it was. Thank you, William. I love them. Hey, you did all right. Mm -mm. No white roses. Hmm? Barney always used to send white roses. Why do you hang on to that fellow, Sheila? Why don't you forget him? Well, first because I remember. I remember not so long ago when I was alone in New York. No work, no friends. At least nobody who cared very much. And then I met Barney. He just sold a play. He liked me. He believed in me. Oh, he made me feel wonderful. Alive. Wanted. He got me to lead in his play. Against everyone else's objections, he got it for me. It was a good play. A great play. He made a star of me. I remember that. I remember the roses he sent me. Every week the play ran. White roses. I suppose white roses are out of season now? Well, Sheila, you can't go on just being grateful to Barney. That wear is pretty thin. It's a little more than that, William. You see, I remember when Barney started drinking, when he couldn't write another play for me. I remember the first time he was called Sheila Page's husband. The white roses I got the next day had a card that read, from Mr. Sheila Page. I remember all those things. But most of all, I remember I loved him. And I love him now. Take these directly to Sheila Page's dressing room, will you? It's the first one over there. Yes, sir. Thank you. You may be right, William. Maybe he isn't worth saving. But I've been given a year to try. A year to live over and right all those wrongs. And I'm going to do it. I must do it. For Sheila Page? Mm -hmm. Thank you. White roses. Love, Barney. Mm -hmm. 
see William. He remembered. You were wrong. I hope so, Sheila. Thanksgiving wouldn't be Thanksgiving without turkey. Is that so? What would it be? Where's the bar? Oh, Miss Michaels. Wouldn't you like some turkey? Good heavens, no. I never eat on an empty stomach. Hi, Sheila. Hi, John. Hello, Bess. I always say it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without sparkling burgundy. Oh, I thought of you, Bess. That way. Thanks, pal. At least Bess will have a good time at your party, John. I'm sorry, Sheila. Barney's looking around for Paula. He doesn't know yet you haven't invited her. The trick is to fill the hollow stem with cognac. Gives the champagne quite a bounce. I've tried that, except I didn't bounce. I just rose to the ceiling and stayed there. To the ceiling? To the moon? You can go places on this stuff. Ah, Mrs. Page. Would you care to join us? We're going to the moon. If you want to get away from it all, why not the moon? It's not so crowded as California. Take it easy, darling. Have a good time, but take it easy, hmm? Make up your mind. You can't do both. Hmm, 1941. Was that a good year for champagne? It was a far better year for champagne than it was for me. I had a hit play that year starring my wife. Never marry an actress, Bob. They're not real people. Now, may I have the wine, please? Barney, I have a headache. It's been an awfully trying day. Do you think we could go home now? I didn't want to come to this party in the first place. But now that I'm here, I'm trying to make the best of it. You're right about the champagne. It wasn't a good year. I'll stick to straight cognac. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Everybody seems to be here but Paula Costello. Seems odd to see Mr. Page without her. Eloise. Oh, come now. It can't be any secret that they're seen everywhere together. Not that I approve. But I'm getting used to show people. Paul is helping Barney with his new play. The Guild wanted some changes. But the Guild isn't doing Barney's play. It's doing Hild Gardner's operetta. I ought to know. <laughs> I'm backing it. You had to open your big mouth. William! Bess, where did Barney go? I don't know. Just look for a bottle of cognac. He'll be with us. Now I know where I met you. At the Pages' New Year's party. You play the piano divinely. Have you ever thought of a concert tour? Privately? Finance? Wouldn't that be rather expensive? Oh, expensive, no item. If I can inspire a young talent. All I ask is a bit of gratitude. Some of my protégés have been most ungrateful. William, will you find Barney for me? I think he went home. Oh, William, you know better than that. What do you mean? Where is Barney? Do you really want to know? Eloise. Look. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. I think they'll let me take him home today. If they're sure there's nothing more they can do. You think after three weeks. It's a miracle he's alive, Sheila. I know. 
Does it take something like this to make things right? Why should that be? I hope it will make things right. Oh, Barney needs me now, John. That's a start toward things being right. He needs me. Well, Doctor? Would you like to sit down, Mrs. Page? Dr. Ross has confirmed my findings. The concussion and hemorrhage have caused a paralysis of the lower extremities. And it's permanent? That's hard to say at this time. Cases vary. People in your husband's condition have been known to walk again in a week, in a year, sometimes never. It all depends. Your husband must have quiet, rest, no excitement, no emotional disturbances. And of course, no liquor. I'm sure with your care and understanding, we can look forward to at least a partial recovery. You'll have to be very patient. May I see him now? I hope he'll talk to you. He hasn't said a word to any of us for days. Barney? I've come to take you home, Barney. The doctors have assured me that in time, with the proper care, you'll be well again. It's just a temporary paralysis. Fire going at the apartment. Maddie's making bran muffins for dinner. It'd be nice to have you home again, Barney. Is he ready to go, nurse? Yes, he is. John. I'll be careful. Here we go, Barney. There. That wasn't too bad, was it? Here, Maddie. Isn't it wonderful to have him home again? Oh, yes, Mrs. Page. Barney, would you like to sit by the fire? Would you rather lie down? I'm sorry about the play, John. Oh, that's all right. Your understudy can carry on for a while. However, I would like it back for Christmas week if you can manage it. I think I can. I hope so. Hello. Hello, Beth. That's right. By the police. It was all Mrs. Shaw's fault. It happened in that toy shop on Fifth Avenue. What is it? It's William. He's been committed to an insane asylum. An insane asylum? Yes. Stay with Bonnie, will you, John? Of course. We're not allowed to shake hands. Sit down, won't you? Well, you predicted this, remember? What about Barney? What happens to him now? He's home, William. There's a chance he may never walk again. 
Poor Sheila. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm all confused. You see, it didn't happen this way the first time. I mean... I know. You tried to tell me once that now was a year ago and that you'd been through it all before. You didn't understand, naturally. Maybe I did. I think I do now. At least the idea appeals to me. I wish I could live this year over again. But you are. You're living it over with me. Everyone is. Only nobody knows. Except you and me, and I've found it out too late. But Barney's paralyzed, and that didn't happen the first time. No. Sheila, that means that destiny slipped a little. Maybe we can escape from her while she's picking herself up. What is it we're escaping from, Sheila? I killed Barney William. I shot him. It was New Year's Eve. That mustn't happen again. <laughs> we haven't much time, have we? Well, don't give up. We'll think of something. Dear William, I'm supposed to be here cheering you up. Maybe we're on the wrong sides of this table. It might be true. It might be true. Tell me, before, did I escape from this place? Yes, on New Year's Eve. You just walked out and got on the bus. I was thinking of doing that. It works. It works. As easy as that. William, is it terrible? Terrible? Oh, no, no. I, I sort of like it. It's, it's kind of homelike. Homelike? This? You didn't know my home. Oh, they can't keep you here, can they, William? Isn't there something I can do? Well, not until they find out what's wrong with me. One doctor thinks I'm schizophrenic, another says paranoia. And I try to keep them all happy. Uh-oh, time's up. Do you need anything? Can I send in something? Yeah. Send me some hair and some virgin wool and some common pins. I want to make a voodoo doll in the image of Laughing Boy here and stick pins in it with a curse. Time's up. That always drives them frantic. Goodbye, William. Merry Christmas, Sheila. the tree now. I thought we'd have an old-fashioned tree with old-fashioned trimmings. It seems the Christmas tree decorations get gaudier by the year. They have plastic candles this season, all colors that bubble like little fountains. The trees look like jukebugs. There. Isn't it beautiful? Giuseppe's little girl at the market strung popcorn and cranberries for me. That's the way I remember my first tree at my grandmother's. It's a greeting card Christmas in New York. I wish I could write Merry Christmas across Washington Square and send it to everyone I know who hasn't seen it like this.
the trees from Pocono Hills, where we spent our honeymoon. Remember, darling? I waited for you to see me put up the star. Friday says the minute my name was announced again, the ticket brokers had a big rush. Maddie will bring your dinner in in a few minutes. Wish me luck, darling. Would you like tea or coffee? I thought they were taboo on my diet. The doctor said just this once because it's Christmas Eve. Bring me the telephone, Matty. As long as the doc is playing Santa Claus, I think I'll have a little brandy on the dock. Well, I don't know about brandy. There's a bottle on the top shelf in the broom closet. Bring it to me. Please, Mr. Page. Matty, it's Christmas Eve. Oh, Matty. Two glasses. Hello, Paula. This is Barney. Here she is. I was supposed to make a welcome back speech, Sheila, but, well, all I can think of to say is welcome back. Mr. Page asked me to call Maddie. I couldn't get over right away. Is he still up? Just a moment, please. Mr. Page, you have a visitor. Show her in, Maddie. Please. Thank you. Hello, Barney. Paula, you did come. Sit down, huh? Oh, thank you. I, uh, I'm sailing for London New Year's Eve. I've been rather busy, but I didn't mean to come and see you before I left. You're sailing New Year's Eve? Mm hmm Midnight. Thought the boat would be better than flying. It'll give me time to do some work on my new play. They've offered me a London production. Don't go, Paula. I'll be up and around after New Year's. We could take up where we left off. I feel wonderful except for my legs. That'll only be a matter of a week or so. You mean you'll be able to walk again so soon? Of course. What did you think? Well, I heard... Well, I understood. Huh? What did you hear? I understood it might be permanent. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Look. Oh, honey. I still feel a little weak. What does it matter what I believe? The main thing is for you to get well. That'll be soon, Paula. I could join you in London. Perhaps they'd go for my new play over there. 
Right? Who told you I'd never walk again? Sheila? No, of course not. You didn't just make it up. Why, Barney, what a question. Suppose I never walked again. Would that change things? What things, Barney? <sighs> I might echo. What a question. You spoke about taking up where we left off. Don't you think we'd better leave things there for a while? After all, this is hardly the time. <sighs> Sit down, Paula. Have a drink. No, no, no. Thank you. Really, I've got to go. You'll say goodbye to Sheila for me? You can say goodbye to Sheila in person, Paula. Goodbye, Barney. I'm sailing for London New Year's Eve. I came up to say goodbye. I came home without changing. If I'd known Barney wasn't alone, I could have taken another curtain call. You were leaving, Paula? Yes, I was. So you're running away. Had you thought about taking Barney with you? To London? Barney likes London. And he needs the care of someone who loves him and whom he loves. You do love him, don't you, Paul? Barney sent for me tonight. That's the only reason I'm here, if you must know. I thought perhaps your conscience had brought you. Well, now that we're alone, aren't you going to ask me to give up, Barney, so that you can be married? Gee, you're not serious. Well, isn't that the logical thing to expect when two people fall in love? I know this has been a terrible thing for you as well as for Barney. The past few weeks must have been expensive. With hospital bills, nurses and specialists. Barney gave me this clip for my birthday. It was frightfully expensive. Will you take it? It might help. And I have no use for it now. Is this all Barney meant to you? I wonder if you know how much he meant to me. I wonder if you know how much I meant to him before he met you. Oh, Sheila, you're breaking my heart. Shall we have a good cry? Not tonight, please, Mike. Half life. It's only a quarter to eleven. We got through early. Sorry to race through it. I, I just didn't feel like playing it tonight. Oh, that's all right. That New Year's Eve crowd wouldn't know the difference. John, will you do me a favor? Certainly. Take me home. I want someone with me until after midnight. Of course, sir. It's very important. I hate to take you away from your party. But... Oh, they'll never miss me. I'm just the host. Remember, John, don't leave me alone with Barney for a moment, no matter what happens. But what are you afraid of? What could possibly happen? Nothing, as long as you're with me. Come with me now. Let's see how Barney is. All right. John, turn on the lights. He left you this note. I tried to stop him, Mrs. Page. But how could he leave? He can't walk. He can walk. <laughs> Mrs. 
That'll be all. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Miss. Barney, how nice of you to come down to the boat. I'm not having a bon voyage party. I hate those things, but I'm glad you came. It was sweet of you. I'll order some champagne, shall I? I didn't come to see you off, Paula. I'm sailing with you. Bonnie, you don't mean that. Why not? You're not well. Not well? I'm here, no one carried me. In another week, I can throw this away in London. We decided to wait, remember? Paula, Sheila lied to you. There's nothing seriously wrong with me. I'm not an invalid. Bonnie, it was all a mistake. A mistake? Yes, a series of mistakes. Let's not make any more. Is that all it adds up to, a mistake? Oh, Bonnie, don't be a fool. You can't go with me to London and that's that. Can you look at me and say that? I... I made a deal with Sheila. You did what? I made a deal to give you up. I'm sticking to my bargain. Sheila loves you. She loves you much more than I ever could. But I don't love Sheila. She's interfered with everything I've ever wanted to do. And now she's interfering with us. I won't have it! Please, Bonnie, you're shouting. You call me a fool, Paula. But you're the fool. Throwing away everything because of a stupid, sniveling girl. I won't let her interfere with our lives. I'll kill her first. Bonnie, for heaven's sake. Come in. All visitors are sure, miss. Thank you, Stuart. My guest was just leaving. Goodbye, Bonnie. I won't go. Oh, yes, you will. I don't want to have you thrown off. Please, Bonnie. Goodbye. May I help you, sir? Take your hands off me. Thanks, John, for everything. I don't like to leave you alone. Oh, I'll be all right. You go on to your party. I've kept you away too long. Oh, that doesn't matter. You've been very patient with me. There must have been many times this year when you thought I was behaving strangely. Well... Someday I'll explain it all to you. Tonight was New Year's Eve again, and I was frightened. But I'm safe now, John. You needn't be worried about me. I'm safe. Nothing can happen now. Well, Happy New Year, Sheila. Could be, you know. I know, John. Thanks. Good night. Good night.
be in bed on New Year's Eve, or in wheelchairs. They should be out dancing or sailing at midnight. I've come back, Sheila. I can walk. I can walk as well as any man. You thought I'd stop walking forever, didn't you? You tried to stop me from so many things. Stop me from drinking. Stop me from loving and being loved. Maybe you hoped one day you'd stop me from living. You told Paula that I'd be a constant care forever, that I was helpless as a child. You shouldn't have said that, Sheila. I'm not helpless. I'm not a child. You're a child, Sheila. You're so young. So young. Too young to die. Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> Try to live my life for me again. You try to stop me from living the way I want to live. Nobody. No, please. You're frightened, aren't you? That's because you're guilty. You tried to destroy me and you almost succeeded. Almost, I say. Now it's my turn. I'm alive. I can walk and I hate you. I think I've always hated you. I must destroy that hate before I can ever love anything again. With a gun. Of course, officer. Uh, I won't be needing it anymore. He's dead. Oh, William, it's why? all right, Sheila. They can't do anything to me. You can't do anything to me. I'm mad, you know. We picked up that nut. He just killed a man. Okay, Captain. All right, lad. Sheila. He came to my apartment looking for him. I was afraid he'd come here. Destiny's a stubborn old girl, Sheila. She doesn't like people interfering with her plans. But we tricked her, didn't we? Anyway, I, I don't think she cares about the pattern as long as the result is the same. 